Hey guys, my name is Frederick and I'm Shrizzle from SinceBuild. Today I want to go through some overclocking and tuning of NVIDIA graphics cards. This will apply to any modern cards such as the 30 series or even the 40 series from NVIDIA that recently released. Unfortunately, this video will not apply to any AMD cards as they are quite different to overclock compared to their NVIDIA counterparts. As for what card I will be using for today, I'll be using a 4070 Ti Asus Tough OC. It's been a great card for me, a lot of overclocking headroom, and it's been a great pleasure having fun with it. So I want to impart some of my knowledge so we can really fine tune your own machine, your own card, and really get tap out the most potential out of your system. To follow along this video, we will need two different programs. The first one being MSI Afterburner, it's a completely free program from MSI that allows to have complete control of our GPU. Set up the power limits, set up the overclock itself, set up multiple profiles of overclocking or even undervolting, and then even set up the fan curve and all that. Now, when you do an overclock, you have to validate it. So the other program will be MSI Combustor. It allows us to stress test the GPU and really make sure that the thermals are good, that the actual overclock is stable, and that everything is running as well as it can. Now that you have Afterburner and Combustor installed, we can open both of them up, and then we can start doing an overclock. So the first thing that you want to do is increase the power limit to the maximum it can. Some cards will be stuck at 100. Mine can go to 110, and there's even cards that will go higher than this, like 120, 125. You just want to find the maximum that you can, and then you want to go into settings over here and start with Windows, and then enable user-defined fan control. By default, this will look like this. We just want to increase it a little bit just to help with temperatures, and we'll keep the card cooler than normally would. It will be a little bit louder, so you just got to adjust it to how high the temperatures you want when you're actually doing your stress test and stuff. And then you want to apply here and then press save over here and then save it on one of the five profiles over here. Now that we have the basic of afterburner set up, what we can do is start running the stress test on combustor and then just move it to the side. What this will do is put a a maximum load on the GPU so we can naturally start increasing the core clock and the memory clock. We want to do only one at a time and do slow incremental steps. For the core clock, this will mean increments of 15. Anything lower, it doesn't matter, and it's always going to be 15. So you can do 15, 30, 45, and so on. You want to slowly increase it and then apply it every time and make sure about 15, 30 second pass before doing it another time. We continue increasing it until we reach our first issue, let's say 90 words, and then you do 105. So once you do 105, you see that it starts giving you some issues such as black screens, black dots, uh, computer restarts, computer crashes, and so on. Once you reach that point, what you want to do Let's pull it back a steps. So you want to bring it back to 90. And then if you want to be on the safer side, you'll take it back another notch. So 75. I like to be on the safer side of things to make sure that I won't have any issues while running the games. So once I have my core clock, what I want to do is let combustor run for a good five minutes. Just to make sure everything's working fine and that there, there are no crashes or issues. Once I see that it passed the five minutes, what I can do now is save the profile and put a profile to you. Now that the core clock is properly set up, we know it's stable, it passed the combustor stress test and everything. What we want to work on now is going to be the memory clock. Same idea as the core clock when you do little incremental steps. For here, the steps will be 100 megahertz each. Every time you increase it, you press apply. You wait 15, 30 seconds. You make sure everything runs good and then you continue increasing it so on so on and let's say a thousand were fine works good increases nicely and then you do 1100 starts having the same issues as a court lock so what you'll do here is pull it back a step so you go back to a thousand 
And then if you want to be on the safer side, which I like to do, you'll go down to 900. And then you press apply, you let it run for five minutes. You make sure everything runs well. It passes with flying colors. Once you have that confirmation, it passes the whole five minutes. You can press on the save button and then save that profile in profile queue. Now that we've fully set up our overclock, one thing to always take into account will be temperature. If you have a case that has really bad airflow or even like a glass panel and it restricts the flow of air, your GPU can get really hot. Anything above 70 to 75 is encroaching the high temperatures that I'm not too comfortable with. So I like to make sure I'm around 70 whenever I'm doing these stress tests and up to 75. Whenever you're gaming, temperatures will be a lot colder than this as games will not utilize resources 100% of the time. So just keep that in mind, adjust accordingly, just listen to what your system is doing. And then a small note about 30 series cards, they have a lot less overclocking headroom than the 40 series cards. So just listen to the, what the card wants, what it allows you to do, and just respect it and then follow what you can do with it. Every card will be different. Some cards will be able to do more than others, but they have a lower starting point or even a higher starting point. Every card will be different. Just follow what it can do. As for me, the overclock I sell with this 470 Ti is 210 and 1800. Works really well. If I do 2000, all duty crashes for me and even combustor crashes. So I brought it down two steps. As for the core clock, uh, 255 is where I crash, and then 225, I'm completely fine with. 240, I've had some issues, so I do 210. This is going to be very different for every uh, person to person. You're always going to be with the luck of the draw on the silicon lottery. So some people will be able to do less. Some people will be able to do about as much. Just listen to what the card wants and slowly work your way up. This took me a good two, uh, day and a half to two days because I was fully testing it one at a time and making sure everything was working perfectly. And then I just adjusted it accordingly. Other than that, this is pretty much the basics on how to do an overclock. And if you have any questions, feel free to write down in the comments below. And I'm really curious to see what you guys can uh, get on your cards. So if you could write down your card as well as the core clock and memory clock uh, frequencies that you get as an increase, I would love to see that. Hope you all learned something new today and uh, hope you guys can uh, apply it.